Hi everyone, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to another video here on our YouTube channel. Today uh, I'm delighted to say that we are going to take a look at a type of beehive that I've never really had the chance to really get to grips with and that's a Langstroth hive and uh, this summer uh, I'm really lucky to have had the opportunity to take on some Langstroth hives courtesy of the Happy Valley Honey Company and Paul Beardmore the owner has very kindly sent across to me a range of the equipment that they stock and supply not only here in the UK but uh, globally so if you're interested in Langstroth hives it will be worth taking a look at their website and I'll put all the usual details in the description below. So the type of hive that the Happy Valley Honey Company sell is called the Honey Paw Langstroth Hive. It's a polystyrene hive and we've got some boxes here at home to just unpack. Uh, today in this video it's my intention to just open up all the boxes and have a look at the equipment that we've got. Uh, I know that we've got some uh, full complete hives with frames and wax uh, but for instance I've never uh, embedded wax into wired frames. I've always purchased wax that has been pre-wired and I know that in this instance we're going to have to experiment with embedding the wax. The hives have been pre-painted so we can get them straight out into an apiary and what I'd like to do is to go through some of the methods that you can use in transferring a colony from one hive type into another. So I run mainly commercial beehives and they're a different frame size to the Langstroths and what I'll also do over the course of the coming few videos is I'll put up some sizes of the different dimensions of the different hives and frame types. Uh, I know that the Langstroth hive can come in a variety of different size boxes and they can contain uh, a variety of different number of frames so it'll be interesting to see exactly what we've got and how we we set those up uh, also there's a variety of floors and roof types so we'll be able to go through all of the different configurations It's really quite blustery now, so uh, we'll try and keep this fairly short. You can see all of the equipment that uh, Paul at Happy Valley Honey has sent us across. It looks really interesting. What I'll do is I'll take it over to the table and show you some of the component parts and how they fit together. And uh, some of it looks really neat, the way that it actually fits together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to, first of all, show you, but then take it out to the apiary and put it to good use. So. So we'll start off with the basic mesh floor. So it's polystyrene construction. It has a mesh plastic insert that goes into the bottom and you simply glue that in place. It's got in integrated feet, so the integral feet will keep it off the floor. And then we have the entrance here, which is quite interesting. And I'll just bring over a brood box to show how that fits and the effect that putting a brood box on top of this floor has in terms of the entrance. So I've added a brood box and this is a 10 frame deep box. So here in the UK we'd call this a brood box but uh, elsewhere in the world it's called a deep and I know that a lot of people use just deeps or just mediums. Uh, possibly even just shallows, but we'll talk about those uh, on another occasion. So again, polystyrene construction. Paul's very kindly pre-painted them for me, which is great. The frames uh, have come 
with the wires in them and what we need to do next is to embed the wax into those before we can use them and we'll uh, produce another video to show you how to embed the wax into the frames. So the B space is just one B space high so looking into the entrance you'll see that there's no need for an entrance block and in terms of uh, mice getting in uh, it's not wide enough for a mouse to be able to squeeze through. With this particular floor there's no need to have an entrance block and having spoken to Paul at Happy Valley Honey uh, he tells me that this system with this floor works absolutely fantastically well. The next component part to put onto this would be the cover board. Uh, so we, we're just going to create the hive as you can see it, perhaps as you would introduce a nuke into one of these. Uh, but in order to build up a colony, you almost certainly will want to put a feeder on it. And uh, the next part to go on that will be the 15 litre feeder. So let's take a look at that. So as I mentioned, the feeder can hold up to 15 litres of sugar syrup. And you'll see that we have these two plastic covers that fit over the feeder ends to stop the bees from coming up and getting into the syrup and drowning. Paul spray painted the inside just to seal the inside as well. And I would recommend that you do that to keep it nice and sealed so that the sugar syrup doesn't eventually seep through into the polystyrene. I'm told that generally it doesn't, but if you happen to leave some syrup on over a longer period of time, there is that possibility. So painting the inside is always a, a good insurance policy. It comes with these two plastic covers, and as I've made the mistake before, uh, we'll peel off the protective cover that comes with them. So it's covered on both sides, so we'll just peel that off from both sides. And these slot in at the bottom edge and then into the top. And you can now have a clear view of the bees coming up and feeding in the sugar syrup. And we'll do that for both sides. And so now we've got both sides covered, but you'll be able to see the bees when they're coming into the feeder to feed, which is quite a nice touch really. So we'll pop that on top. And then we'll put the cover board on top of this. And the same as before, this will have a plastic cover on both sides. If you've seen the earlier videos that I've made, uh, you'll know that I forgot to take the plastic protective cover off. And then finally we have the roof, which will go on top. And this has some unique features about it that I really like. It's what's known as a telescoping roof, so it comes down uh, part way over the feeder. It's about two inches from the top down. And you'll notice that on the top, it's got uh, this area where you could put another brood box on top. So this front edge acts as an entrance, and then you can place another brood box on top. So if you were doing splits, you could actually have one entrance here, turn the roof round so that it faces a different direction, and then strap it all together, and you've actually got two complete colonies that you could then go on to divide at a later stage. We'll show you that in action when we actually get on to putting some bees into the hives, building them up, and then perhaps this year we, we might go on to split them and show you how we can utilize this roof. So one of the other features of the honey pour hives are that you can get something called a migratory roof. And this is a really helpful roof. From what I can tell, we're gonna be able to use this to a really good advantage. So instead of having 
this telescoping roof. If we take off the feeder and that roof and just pop them on the floor, if we wanted to move bees around and we needed to stack them, we could use this particular roof which slots in to little recesses that are in the um, hive body and that locks into place and again it acts as a floor so we could turn this around 180 degrees and use it so that there's a floor on the back edge as well as a floor on the front and again we can use that to build up a colony and then to split it or to use part of it as a queen rearing a cell building colony so I think that is going to be a really useful piece of equipment for us uh, and I'm, I'm quite excited to see how that works actually out in the field in one of the apiaries. So following a short malfunction of the microphone, uh, we're here on day two. Uh, obviously those of you with eagle eyes will spot the outfit change. Um, however, uh, this is the alternative floor that you couldn't get from the Happy Valley Honey Company and the Honey Poor Hives. It's called a ventilated floor and it works in uh, a very similar way to any standard floor but it has an, an additional ventilation system in the bottom and it also allows you to add additional uh, insulation to the colony through the winter. So let me just show you how that works. So it has a removable floor insert which uh, can be reversed. So if we pop that to one side for one moment uh, we have a standard floor which is quite a deep floor and it has the mesh panels in the bottom and those clip together so in the standard mesh floor it has the little lugs on the side which you trim off before you fit the mesh into the base of the floor with this particular floor panel because it has two they actually clip together so they have three lugs on each panel and those slot into each other and hold it nice and firmly and then they can go into the bottom and be positioned and held in place with a small dab of silicon. So once those are in place you can then pop in the insulation panel and this can sit one of two ways up so and so in its standard configuration it provides a depth of probably two to three inches beneath the brood nest area so beneath the frames and it has channels either side to allow for fresh air to ventilate through and around the floor in the winter this can be removed and turned over and then replaced and that has the effect of moving the polystyrene closer to the brood nest and so reduces the amount of air space between the bottom of the frames and the bottom of the brood nest and this polystyrene insulated flooring. You still have the ventilated sides so you can still get some air circulating but it just reduces the amount of air space that sits dormant beneath the brood nest. I'm not sure that I'll actually need to use that because we don't have winters that are terribly cold. We do this year certainly it was quite a long winter but it wasn't really cold. So I suspect that we'll just use it in its normal configuration with the uh, deeper space beneath the brood nest. So the hive body sits on top of this. And you can see at the entrance, it's a very wide entrance. And here you would certainly, uh, in a couple of my apiaries, you'd have mice accessing the brood nest area. And so you can fit a strip entrance, which sits in the slots in the front of the floor. The brood box then sits against that and you can push the brood box tight against that and that provides for two different sizes of entrance and this can be flipped over 
to provide a wider entrance in the summer, which is uh, approximately 10, maybe 15 centimetres wide. And then flipped around, it provides a smaller entrance for when you want to give the bees perhaps a little bit more security. And certainly in the winter, that would be the size of the entrance that I would use. And then as normal, you'd have your cover board and a roof to fit on top. Once we get through to putting supers on, we'll need to use excluders. And these are a standard plastic excluder, slightly thicker than the thin galvanized style that you can get. And those fit nice and snug on top of the brood box. And then the supers or medium boxes, shallow boxes can go on top of those. And then finally, you'd want to make sure certainly that it's held in place because it's polystyrene there is a chance that the wind could get underneath the roofs are, are pretty heavy the polystyrene is a very dense form of polystyrene so it's quite weighty but in a, a strong wind it's there is a chance that it could get lifted so again you would need a strap for it and again Paul can supply straps for all of the hives and it's a standard uh, woven webbing strap the, a good strong clasp on the side. And then tightens down at the side. So I mentioned earlier that we were looking to move some bees from a commercial hive into the Langstroth hives. And one of the methods that we're going to do is a shook swarm. And we'll follow that up with uh, some other methods, a Bailey comb change and also we'll try a cutout and move some of the comb from the commercial frames into these Langstroth frames, because I wanted to show you how easy it is, in fact, to convert from one hive type to another. I'm really looking forward to getting these hives out into the apiary. And once we've fixed the floors in place, so the uh, gray mesh panel that fits in the bottom of the floor, we're going to fix in place with some silicon. Uh, just a small blob in each corner and I'll show you how we do that and once we've got the frames wired we can then take them out to the apiary site and really get started in doing some beekeeping with these hives. My thanks to Paul at the Happy Valley Honey Company for supplying us with all of this equipment to demonstrate to you all. I'm really looking forward to moving through the season and showing you how the honeybees settle into these hives and then progress into their first winter in these Happy Valley Honey Company Honey Pour Langstroth polystyrene hives. So I'll catch up in the next video where we'll be fitting the floor, embedding some wax and then moving them out into the apiary. But until then, thanks for watching.